everyone. Welcome to the KBB From the Tap podcast. I'm executive editor Chelsea Butler. This week, I have designer Daniela Hoffer of New Jersey-based Hoffer Interiors, and she's going to be talking to us about how to design a successful kosher kitchen for your clients. Be sure to subscribe to KBB's YouTube channel and click the like button on our videos. You can also subscribe to the From the Tap podcast on such apps as Apple, Spotify, Pandora, and Google Podcasts. And please feel free to leave a review. She has a lot of experience to share with us in this arena. So welcome, Daniela, and thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Chelsea. So let's go ahead and get started with you giving us some background on your expertise as a kosher kitchen designer. Sure. Okay. So I've been designing kitchens for my firm for about three years, but started back about seven years ago. Uh, when I actually started with my own kosher kitchen, uh, when I built my home. Um, so that gave me the first introduction into understanding uh, the nuances and figuring out the functionality of what in particular would be needed for a kosher kitchen. That makes sense. So, and how long ago was that that you designed your own? That was about seven years ago. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how kosher kitchens can be different, how they are similar. Like I assume they're not all the same, but they have probably a lot of similarities. Yeah. I mean, every kitchen we design is different, um, but I guess the basic nuance is um, in a kosher kitchen, you try to keep your meat and your milk types of um, dishes and food separate. So we'll um, design kitchens with separate sinks and ovens, potentially stoves, so that when you're cooking, we don't mix milk and meat. And this way, it's very clear as to which part of the kitchen you would use uh, for cooking milk versus cooking meat. Okay. And so what, what's the idea behind that? Like, why the need for the separation? Um, according to Judaism, we're not supposed to mix milk and meat. So when cooking, you want to be as careful as possible not to mistakenly use the same dishes or to wash things together. Um, So in order to accomplish this um, over time, you know, as kitchens have gotten larger and more sophisticated um, and as clients want more features in their kitchen, we take that into account so that um, the cooking mechanisms are also separate and just make it easier um, when we're, we're cooking. So what can you tell us about some of the things all kosher kitchens typically include? Sure. So I think the most common thing you'll see in a kosher kitchen is separate sinks. So I think that had originally started with, you know, a sink that was just broken into two. Um, But today we really shift um, the sinks to different sides of the kitchen when we can, again, to really delineate the the space between. Um, And in some kitchens, we'll also have a third sink which is more neutral, that can be used for things that are not meat or milk. Um, So if you're baking and you're not using dairy type of equipment and um, things like butter, you could just wash them at what's called like the neutral part of sink. Um, So sinks are definitely the number one thing. After that, I would say ovens. Um, We'll do a lot of kitchens that will have two separate ovens or a double oven where one will be milk, one will be meat. And again, it's about the fact that we don't cook those things together. So um, when we're baking or we're cooking, we try to keep those separate as well from an oven standpoint. It's not that it's required, um, you know, in every kitchen, it's just a nice feature that we're now able to add. So sinks, um, ovens, um, there's other aspects as well. So like on the Sabbath, uh, we don't cook, but we can warm food. So other features that we'll include will be things like warming drawers, because many people do use warming drawers on the Sabbath to help warm food. There's also something called the Sabbath mode where um, certain appliances, um, uh, GE is very well known for this, as well as other brands um, that have certification that what we call Sabbath mode. Essentially what that means is the automatic turn off at 12 hours can be shut off so that your ovens can be on longer. So if you wanna use them um, over a holiday, you can, which also where we can't per se turn on the oven, you can do that as well. So it's very popular right now, especially during the time of Passover, which we're currently in. 
Okay, so going back to the sink situation, sure. is it is it? Tell me about the process of being able to locate sinks on, you know, different areas of the kitchen. Is that <clears throat> challenging? It can be, depending on the size of the kitchen. Um, you know, you also want a lot of work surface, so you don't always have space for large sinks. So in some cases, we'll put one sink. If there's an island, we'll put one sink in the island. And then we'll put one sink on a wall, um, maybe one that has a window. Um, we recently did a kitchen where the client didn't want a sink in the island. So we actually designed it where there were two sinks on the same wall. We just left about six feet in between them. So it still gave them a beautiful look, but there was a clear separation between their two sinks. So then talking about the appliances again, um, how are you able to get two of most appliances to fit in, say, maybe a standard size kitchen. I, I need to hear some tips about making this happen, <laughs> assuming that the clients you're working for don't all have room for a massive kitchen in their home. Sure. And that's definitely the case. We don't, you know, I love, sometimes that's the best part, trying to fit the puzzle pieces together. Um, something that I recommend to clients, if we do have more limited space, is something like dishwasher drawers. So two dishwasher drawers can take up the space essentially of one dishwasher. And this way you can use one for meat and one for milk and keep them separate. That is definitely um, something that we do. Another thing is if you can't fit two full-size sinks, if you could fit one large sink, um, you know, a 30 inch wide sink, something like that, and then put a smaller sink in an island or in the corner um, in a kitchen, that's another option that we suggest to our clients as well. Okay, and then what about some of the other, like the cooking appliances? Sure. So again, double wall ovens are, are fairly popular right now. So that's an easy way to fit two ovens into your home, top and bottom. Um, warming drawers, in many cases, we can tuck underneath the, the wall oven. So that space at the bottom towards the floor that sometimes is used for a large drawer is a great place to also tuck in a warming drawer. Okay. So it's okay for the wall ovens to be close to each other, just as long yeah. as they're separate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I'm assuming you don't, the, you, the kosher kitchen doesn't require two ranges? No. And again, it's not per se about requirements. There's different ways that we can clean our appliances so that you can use them for both meat and milk. Uh, but for convenience sake, and because we do a lot of cooking, um, you know, because of the Sabbath and holidays, um, a lot of my clients want that convenience of the functionality being separate. Um, but I have also done kitchens where we do have two ranges and two cooktops or we'll do an extra large um, range as well with an extra large cooktop. And I'm assuming separating, you know, cookware and things like that. Um, so there has to be enough cabinet space to kind of separate things a bit for their mm -hmm. different uses. Yeah, absolutely. And what we'll do a lot, we'll sit down with our clients or we'll go through their original kitchen, the one that they have right now, and we'll go through their drawers and we'll see just like in any kitchen, how they're using their space. Um, and then we'll map out in the new plan to make sure that we have enough storage. So, um, you know, making sure there's enough drawers for utensils or rollouts for pots and pans. Um, we definitely take that into account. Another feature that I think is growing in most kitchens, but I'm seeing it a lot also in kosher kitchens, are pantries. Um, pantries are incredibly popular for, you know, your food and for your larger cookware, um, especially in a kosher kitchen where we have a lot of additional cookware in some cases, um, fitting in a pantry next to a kitchen um, is something we like to do. So talk to me a little bit about the budget here with the kosher kitchen. Mm -hmm. Are they typically higher for a kosher kitchen than those that are not? I mean, with these additional um, appliances and, and you know different sink locations in terms of mm -hmm. having plumbing and different areas, talk to me a little bit about that. Um, not really, actually. In some cases, yes, but it really will depend on the brand of appliances, like any kitchen. Um, we'll find many times when we're talking to a client about maybe fitting in an extra dishwasher or something like that, the cost of an extra cabinet versus a dishwasher could end up being the same price. Um, so it doesn't per se have to be more expensive. There is definitely economical ways of doing it and making it work. Okay. Do you have any tips for those economical ways to stay on budget? Um, you know, selecting certain brands, you know, there are certain GE appliances um, that we use. We will use more economical sinks. Um, we do try to stick with stainless steel sinks. We do find 
Um, they're the easiest for our clients to clean. Um, so, you know, if we're using an LK brand for a sink, that will help us on affordability as well. Um, you know, we would definitely want good quality appliances, but maybe we won't go the Viking or Sub-Zero route if we want to keep things a little bit more budget friendly. That makes sense. Okay. And then the functionality of a kosher kitchen, I think you said it doesn't limit the aesthetics. No, definitely not. Um, if we have a lot of appliances and we, and we have a client that doesn't want it to feel like an industrial kitchen with all the stainless steel per se, sometimes we'll um, use appliances that either offer different color fronts or we'll have things that are panel ready. So whether it's a refrigerator or dishwasher, um, selecting appliances where you can put a, a cabinet front really helps also create this beautiful holistic look. I recommend this to both my clients that have kosher kitchens and ones that don't, but it's definitely an add-on that we recommend in a kosher kitchen um, because we do generally include a lot more appliances. So I was going to talk a little bit about the materials that you select in terms of tile, flooring, countertops. Mm -hmm. Are does the, Do those kinds of things play into the kosher kitchen idea? Um, you know, we really use a variety of different materials the same way I would in most kitchens. Um, we stick a lot with quartzite, um, quartz, not as much marble. Um, we do a I mean, a lot of my clients do a lot of cooking and because the marble can stain a little bit more, we, we somewhat stay away from that. For backsplash, again, the same types of materials. It really hasn't limited our kitchens in any way. Um, I would say we don't do as many like butcher block type of countertops. It's a little bit harder to clean. For sinks, again, we um, generally recommend stainless steel sinks. They're easier to clean than a porcelain type of farmhouse sink. Um, so yeah, that would be the major differences. Okay. Then let's go on to talking a little bit about some challenges that you've had to overcome when designing a kosher kitchen. Sure. Um, I guess, you know, going back to your original question about space, you know, I have some clients that want um, three dishwashers and they want maybe one or two warming drawers. We also want to fit in two microwaves. Um, and that's where there'll have to be some compromises if they want all those appliances. We can't always fit in all the cabinetry. Um, so if we can find space for a pantry, that's when we'll try to do that. Um, but that's when we'll have to really be very efficient with our cabinet space in order to fit in all of those appliances. There are also um, specifications as to where you can put certain appliances in a kitchen, you know, due to code in different towns. Um, so whether it's the microwave um, or the warming drawers, things like that, we can't always put them on top of each other, um, you know, too much heat. So we have to take that into account up front when we're planning out our kitchen and really know how many appliances we're going to have um, so that we can plan for that. So are there specific questions that you, I mean, obviously you would do that for any client, kosher or not. Um, what are some of the questions, some of the things that you need to learn about this particular client to, to create a successful project? Sure. So understanding one, how much they cook is really helpful. We have some clients that cook a lot more than others. We have clients who bake. We have clients that entertain a lot. Um, for clients with you know larger families who cook, or who cook a lot, we'll do a lot of side-by-side -side full fridge freezer um, units. And when we want to do those, we really have to take that into account because they're a bit wider than a standard French door type of uh, fridge freezer unit. Um, so really understanding how they live, how many people are in their household, um, you know, things like that are definitely things that we try to take into account. And we definitely like to go into our clients' homes at the beginning of projects to see their current spaces. Um, so we can see how they're currently living and, and what they hope their new kitchen and space will look like. So earlier you mentioned, you know, I didn't really take into consideration that a kosher family may be maybe living in a in a home without a kosher kitchen until they do the renovation. So how how do they operate in there? Is there a lot of finessing and just sort of challenges where that's concerned before they can do I mean, the renovation? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible. Not everyone has uh, you know, what we call a kosher kitchen, um, especially if they're living in an apartment or a smaller home. So for example, in a sink, um, you'll use like a drain board on the bottom, um, you know, you'll wash it out in between usages. Um, you know, there's definitely more maybe things on the counters and things like that to keep things organized. Um, it's totally doable. Um, it's just probably not as easy 
in certain ways. So we try again to make the kitchen a more pleasant place, more convenient when we create this, these kosher kitchens. Um, again, not all of our clients can do it. So we try to add whatever accommodations we can. And that's where even in like a small galley kitchen, if we're doing it in the city, trying to tuck in an extra dishwasher drawer or a half size 18 inch dishwasher is something that we'll try to do to help accommodate um, some of their cooking needs. So tell us a little bit about your kosher kitchen. What, what do you got going on there? Ah, okay. <laughs> um, so I definitely wanted some of that added convenience. I do cook a lot. Um, I have in my kitchen, I have three ovens. I have two stovetops. I have a full fridge freezer. Um, I have four kids. So really wanted to also make it convenient to them. Um, they couldn't always reach the top shelf in the refrigerator, for example, when they were younger. Um, and it was always loaded up with, you know, our different types of foods and things like that, that we had, you know, for daily use or for the Sabbath. So we also have a beverage fridge, um, in the kitchen, um, for them as well. Um, and then again, I have two sinks on either side, and then I also have a smaller sink in my island. Um, so I think that having my own kosher kitchen has definitely taught me, um, you know, what I like and what I like to suggest to my clients. And I'm always trying to give them some new ideas for how to enhance their space. Do they ever, do any of them ever see your space beforehand, <laughs> either in person yeah. or in pictures or anything? Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely invited clients over so that they can get a feel for it. Um, there are pictures on my website that they can see as well. Um, I have some really amazing clients who will allow other clients also to come over. I think that seeing different spaces or looking at lots of pictures also helps my clients envision what their homes can look like. Um, I try to introduce them to different pieces of functionality. So for even example, um, if we have limited drawer space, for example, um, doing a double rollout, you know, in a drawer that's a little bit deeper will allow for additional utensils. So we'll do a double um, roll out in a drawer. So the bottom will be your everyday utensils. And right on top, you'll have a thinner, more uh, shallow depth drawer where you can put like your serverware and things like that. So I love to show them these new types of features so that it can really help accommodate um, their different needs without having to, you know, expand their kitchen per se. So would you say that, um, you know, kitchen brands today are evolving? Like, are they coming up with new ideas for kosher kitchens? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think we're seeing appliance companies, as I mentioned, the Sabbath mode is something that companies like GE has, Sub-Zero has, um, where you can, you know, turn off the automatic turn off on an oven or even in a refrigerator. When you open a refrigerator and the light goes on, um, that's something that um, many of my clients don't want to happen on the Sabbath. So there's ways to turn off that light in the refrigerator easily on a weekly basis. Um, so things like that are accommodations that we find that a lot of appliance companies are starting to take into account. That's great. Yeah. So my final question would be your advice for a designer who is wanting to learn more about creating these, because it, it sounds like it's a it's a bit of a learning curve, um, especially if you haven't actually designed your own. I'm sure a lot of them have not. So what are your tips? Sure. So I definitely think that starting with your client. So if you have a client that comes to you and you've never designed a kosher kitchen before, but they love your aesthetic, start by talking to them about how they live. Um, what does it mean to them? Because everyone's kosher kitchen might mean something a little bit different to them. It's not always completely one size fits all. So understanding how your client lives so that you can incorporate that into the design, I think is really the best starting point. Um, and then I think there's some great resources, you know, online, even through Instagram, you know, if you, if you do a search for kosher kitchen, you can find a lot of the features that we use. Um, also talking to your appliance partners and your local appliance. Um, partner and vendor as to which appliances offer things like the Sabbath mode is another great way to get started. So I just, I, one more question came to mind. Sure. <laughs> I'm thinking about, you know, um, if, uh, you know, clients invest in this um, kosher kitchen. So I assume they're planning on living in their home for the foreseeable future because I don't know that they're going to get, you know, the next buyer. Are they thinking about resale value with this kind of thing? Like if somebody moves into their home, you know, after they move out, um, is a kosher kitchen good for resale value? 
I think so. It's it's sort of like a gourmet kitchen, right? You know, it, it has all these wonderful features that I haven't found any clients don't really like when they've looked at a kosher kitchen, maybe that they didn't come from one before. Um, but let's say there are more appliances than you want and you need an extra drawer or something like that. You can always take out one of those appliances and have a drawer or a cabinet door put in. Um, in some cases, you can you can certainly just tell from looking at the cabinet from, from the inside what the brand is, or you can have um, a local millwork person come and make an extra cabinet door. But for the most part, all of my clients like the benefit of having some extra sink space um, and some extra you know, oven space. It's, it's definitely been more value um, for my clients or as they're looking to sell their homes rather. Yeah, sounds like a definite win-win. Well, thank you so much, Daniela, for joining of us course. and giving our listeners all this great information so that they can be kosher kitchen experts as well. 